Okay, so now we're moving on on how to draw basic Lewis structures. Um, first question we need to understand is about valence electrons. So how many valence electrons do most atoms have around them when they form a chemical bond in the Lewis structure? You should have that from the last class. The answer is most have eight electrons around them in a Lewis structure. Um, because there's eight electrons arranged in four pairs, usually, um, around an atom, we call this the octet rule, octet for eight. Um, there are exceptions. The main exception is hydrogen. Um, it only has two electrons around it. So for hydrogen, we call it um, a duet rule, as you'll see. Now, what are Lewis structures? Lewis structures are a way to draw all of the valence electrons for every atom in a whole compound. They're used to determine 3D shape of molecules, which we'll get to in the last couple of classes next week. How many valence electrons are around each atom in a compound? Well, the duet rule, as I said, is for hydrogen. For the row one purity table, there's only one element that can bond, that's hydrogen. And it, because it only has a 1s orbital, it starts out with one electron when it forms a bond, it can only have two. So um, it's filled uh, as soon as you have a second electron in there. So it can only form one bond ever. Hydrogen will fill its outer shell, which is just the 1s shell, with two total electrons. So we call it the duet rule for hydrogen, but it's just common sense. You can't bond any more than that to hydrogen. And here are some examples. I'm showing electrons as little dots. Uh, you'll see that mostly I show them as lines, but some of these slides are old. Um, in IB chemistry, which is where some of my slides were originally developed, they use dots only in IB. Um, so I decided to just not remake these. But anyway, it's a single bond between two hydrogens, a bond, again, a single bond between a hydrogen and a fluorine, and oxygen with a single bond to two hydrogens. As you'll see, single bonds are a pair of electrons. And if you remember from the localized electron bonding model, that's because you've got an overlap of the electrons um, from half-filled orbitals, atomic orbitals. Now, the octet rule for binding uh, basically applies to most of the other elements. For almost every other atom, the electrons available for, for bonding are the sum of the two electrons in the S and the six electrons in the possible electrons in the P for the period that the element is in. Okay, most atoms that bond um, want, I say want to have, they don't really want anything, they're atoms, but have their most stable energy organization if they have eight electrons in their outer energy level. And that's why it's called the octet rule. That outer energy level is the uh, elect, uh, orbitals on the surface, which are the S and P orbitals at the very highest period in which the element is found in. So here are some examples. You can see all the electrons shown here for oxygen. Two are bonded. Two are what are called lone pairs. They're not bonded to an atom. Here is that hydrogen uh, monofluoride again. You can see there's one bonded pair, three lone pairs, but again, it's got eight total electrons around it. Here is methane, CH4, and you can see that it, carbon has four bonded pairs around it. Now, this is what you should do. You should print this slide, and you should print the next slide, or you should just copy everything down. Um, I'll, I'll, actually, what I'll do is I will put these two slides into the notes, all right, so that you can print them separately, because this is gonna be a video. All right, now, Lewis structure shows all the valence electrons around atoms in all the chemical bonds of a compound. It also shows all the lone pairs. So the first thing we do to form, draw a valence, uh, excuse me, the first thing we do to draw Lewis structure is we add up all the valence electrons. Remember, they're the S and P electrons in the um, highest energy level which the atom is found. Now, there is an accompanying video that you should use this page and the next page for that shows you how to apply these rules. When I have a normal class and we can meet face to face, you're allowed to use these two slides during quizzes and tests. Okay, rule number two, place the first non-hydrogen atom in the center and arrange the other atoms around it. Rule number three, draw lines. These are considered single bonds connecting all the atoms to the center. Rule number four, subtract the number of electrons present in the bonds from the total number counted at the beginning. Uh, I'm just going to read these because what you're going to do is you're going to watch the other video where I walk through step by step with four examples on how to apply these rules. The fifth rule is you arrange any remaining electrons, again, everything is going to be in pairs, uh, to satisfy the duet rule for hydrogen and the octet rule for other atoms. Um, honestly, as soon as hydrogen forms a bond, you're done. 
but many of the other atoms you'll see don't necessarily get a full octet when we do this step. The reason why is because sometimes they have double bonds. As you will find out um, when you look at the example, sometimes you will run out of electrons before completing all the octets. So if you're short electrons, you will need to add double bonds and or triple bonds until the octet rule is fulfilled and the total number of electrons is correct. Again, I'm going to go through this very quickly. Watch the video. The video takes you through four examples on how to apply these rules. Now, if we were to draw the Lewis structure of NH3, you would look up the number of valence electrons. Nitrogen is in the second period. It's the fifth element over. It's got five total S and P electrons. Each hydrogen has one, so that's eight electrons. So there's eight valence electrons. Nitrogen goes in the middle. We connect our hydrogens up. They have that takes out six electrons, a lone pair is left on the nitrogen. This is a correct structure. Here's one that's got carbon surrounded by four um, halogens. Carbon likes to form four bonds. So it's got four single bonds. Each of the halogens likes to form one bond. And take a look, their bonding and number of lone pairs is exactly the same, which kind of makes sense. They're all in the same group, so they should have very similar chemical structure. Now these two are also shown here where what I wanted to do is just try to give you an idea of what it looks like when you build it with a model. We don't, unfortunately, you don't have model kits. Normally, I have a bunch of them and you can take them and play with them. But here you just have to look. So that's the nitrogen of the ammonia of NH3. Those are the three hydrogens and that's the lone pair. You can see it's actually kind of a three-dimensional structure, not something flat like on a piece of paper. This is the carbon. And then these four green atoms represent the halogen. So chlorine, bromine, fluorine, and iodine. Again, there's four of them single bonded to the carbon in the middle. Now, I don't show the lone pairs on these. I don't have enough lone pairs, and also they're not designed with three additional holes to show um, lone pairs anyway. More examples. Uh, H2S, so if this was aqueous, it would be um, hydrosulfuric acid. Uh, it basically has the same Lewis structure as oxygen. You can put an oxygen in here instead of sulfur because oxygen and sulfur are in the same group. You have uh, the center atom bonded to two hydrogens with two lone pairs on it. Um, draw the Lewis structure of this. This is methanol. The way this works is carbon likes to have four bonds. So three of these hydrogens and that oxygen are going to be bonded to the carbon. Carbon doesn't have five bonds. so This last hydrogen has to bond to oxygen. Oxygen likes to have two bonds. How can you tell? Well, you look at how many holes they have. In other words, carbon has two p electrons, excuse me, one, two, yes, two p electrons. So it's got four more in order to fill, so it makes four bonds. You go over to nitrogen. Nitrogen has five uh, total electrons, three in the p, so it's got space for three more before it fills. Oxygen is the next group over. Oxygen has six total electrons, four in the p, so it's got two holes to fill. And then when you get to halogens, they've got five out of the six slots in the p orbitals fills, so they've only got one hole left, so they form one bond. So four, three, two, one is pretty easy to remember. Um, this one is a little more complicated. Again, that these hydrogens and the oxygen have to go to the carbon, and this hydrogen has to go to that oxygen. So we can it up our single bonds, added everything up, and this is the total proper number of valence electrons. Again, look at the other video. The other video walks you step by step through four examples. Um, it walks through this example. Uh, it might be this example. And I think it might be this example. Anyway, and, and nitrogen. It walks you through several of the examples. All right, that's it.